Where we're at right now is I think we've kind of gotten to the point where we've uh, built out a lot of the basics. <laughs> and, you know, I think those basics actually are pretty cool. Like they work pretty well. We can get a robot that will like fold laundry and that will go into a new home and like try to clean up the kitchen. But in my mind, what we're doing at Physical Intelligence right now is really the very, very early beginning. It's just like putting in place the basic building blocks on top of which we can then tackle all these like really tough problems. And what's the year-by-year -year vision? So um, one year in, now I got a chance to watch some of the robots and they can do pretty dexterous tasks like folding a box using grippers. And it's like, I don't know, it's like pretty hard to fold a box even with like my hands. Um, if you had to go year by year until we get to the full like robotics explosion, what is happening every single year? What is the thing that needs to be unlocked, et cetera? So there are a few things that we need to get right. Uh, I mean, dexterity obviously is one of them. And in the beginning, we really want to make sure that we um, understand whether the methods that we're developing have the ability to tackle like the kind of intricate tasks that people can do. Yeah. So, as you mentioned, like folding a box, uh, folding different articles of laundry, cleaning up a table, yeah. uh, making a coffee, that sort of thing. And that's like, that's good. Like that works. Uh, you know, I think that the results we've been able to show are pretty cool. But again, like the end goal of this is not to fold a nice t-shirt. The end goal is to just like confirm our initial hypothesis that like the basics are kind of solid. Yeah. But from there, there are a number of really major challenges. And I think that, you know, sometimes when um, – results get abstracted to the level of like a three minute video. Someone can look at this video is like, it's like, oh, that's cool. Like that's what they're doing. But it's not like it's a very simple and uh, basic version of what I think is to come. Like what you really want from a robot is not to tell it like, hey, please fold my t-shirt. What you want from a robot is to tell it like, hey, robot, like you're now doing all sorts of uh, home tasks for me. Uh, I like to have dinner made at 6 p.m. Uh, I wake up and go to work at 7 a.m. Uh, I'd like, you know, I like to do my laundry on on Saturday, so make sure that that's ready. This and this and this. Uh, and by the way, check in with me like every Monday to see like, you know, what, what I want you to do to pick up when you do the shopping. Right. Right. Like that's the prompt, and then the robot should go and do this for like, you know, six months, a year. Like that's the duration of the task. Mm. So it's it's it's. Ultimately, if, if this stuff is successful, it should be a lot bigger and it should have that ability to learn continuously. It should have the uh, understanding of the physical world, the common sense, the ability to go in and pull in more information if it needs it. Like yeah. if I ask it like, hey, um, tonight, like, uh, you know, can you, uh, can you make me this type of salad? It's like, okay, you should like figure out what that entails, like look it up, go and buy the ingredients. So there's a lot that goes into this. It requires common sense. It requires understanding that there are certain edge cases that you need to handle intelligently, cases where you need to think harder. Uh, it requires the ability to improve continuously. It requires understanding safety, being reliable at the right time, being able to fix your mistakes when you do make those yeah. mistakes. So there's a lot more that goes into this. Um, but the principles there are you need to leverage prior knowledge and you need to have the right representations. So, so this grand vision, what year, if you had to give an esti a median estimate? Yeah. Or 25 percentile, uh, 50, <laughs> 75? I think it's something where it's not going to be a case where we develop everything in the laboratory and then it's done. And then, you know, come 20, 30 something, you get a robot in a box. I think it'll be the same as what we've seen with the AI assistants, that uh, once we reach some basic level of competence where the robot is delivering something useful, it'll go out there in the world. The cool thing is that once it's out there in the world, they can collect experience and leverage that experience to get better. Mm. So to me, like what, what I temp tend to think about a lot in terms of timelines is not the date when it will be done, but the date when it will, when like the flywheel starts, basically. Right. Okay, so when does the flywheel start? I think that could be very soon. Uh, and, I, and I think there's some decisions to be made. Like the trade-off there is the more narrow you, you, you scope the thing, the earlier you can get it out into the real world. Um, so, uh, but soon as in like, this is something we're already exploring. We're already trying to figure out like, what are like the real things this thing can do that could allow us to start spinning the flywheel. But I think in terms of like stuff that you would actually care about that you would want to see. Um, so I don't know, but I think that single digit years is very realistic. I'm really hoping it'll be more like one or two before some, something is like actually out there, but it's hard to say. And something being out there means what? Like what, what, what is out there? It means that there is a robot that does a thing that you actually care about, yeah. that, that you want done, and it does so competently enough to like actually do it for real, for real people that want it done. If you enjoyed this clip, you can watch the full episode here and subscribe for more clips. Thanks.